All right, today we're going to be talking about resumes. So what is a resume? A resume is a one piece of paper that you give to your employer to find out more about you. This piece of paper will tell them about your education, your jobs, and your objectives in this career. Um, it's really important to have a resume because um, employers really look at this one piece of paper and determine whether you are qualified and want to interview you in the future. So this is really important. It will have all of your accomplishments, objectives, education, past jobs, all of those things that make you you as a professional. It will have all of that in there for your employer to view. Um, so we're going to talk about some tips for your resume. So the first tip is writing a resume is a long process. This is this is a piece of paper that you will always have to edit and continue um, adjusting as time goes. So you'll have many drafts of your resume. It is really important that as you move forward with new resume uh, formats or just adding new things to your resume, that you always name your resume properly. Um, this will help you in the long run once you have about 10 different resumes, know which one exactly you want to continue editing and which one fits the job that you are going for. You should always have about two to three people proofread your um, resume for any typos and check just to see if you're missing something that you want to include in your resume. For example, a volunteer opportunity that you did two years ago, but you completely forgot about it. Having those people read your resume, they can help you remember that you did that. You will always update your resume multiple times and you will have to update your resume for every job that you go for. Some things in your resume will get deleted or put on hold as you go in life as a professional. So for example, if you're going for an education job, you might opt out not to put in your waitressing um, job two years ago. You might have more relevant information that you can put in your resume instead of that one job. Um, it also depends on how many jobs you've had previously. But a resume is always a work in progress and you should always make it fit that job that you are going for. In your resume, you should always be honest and truthful about your past experiences in the job. So you should always put the job that you um, had, but also make sure that the job description, so uh, whatever job duties you had in your job, you are putting them honestly on your resume. So you should never put anything that you did not do on your resume. List the most recent experiences first. So it should be in reverse chronological order. So anything that you are doing now or anything that you have done in the past that's the most recent should be on top first as number one. Number two should be the thing that you did previous to that and uh, goes down the list like that. You should never use any abbreviations or slang in your resume as it is a professional document. Anything that um, you are abbreviating should be written out so people know exactly what it is. So for example, a lot of people don't know what ITA is, so you should always spell it out, Information Technology Academy. That goes for any program or any other job that you have done. Although it might be common knowledge for you, it might not be for your employer. Be consistent is an important part as well. The formatting, the font size, anything in your resume should be consistent all throughout your resume. It is the first thing that employers see and it's important that consistency runs along your piece of paper. Having bulletins, asterisks, and dashes help employers really focus on those aspects of the job. They tell the employer this is something really important. So if you find that you need to put those in there, make sure that you are using one of those three things to highlight that these things are important. Your resume should be a one-page piece of paper, especially as you are in high school. It should not be longer than that. All of your extracurriculars, educational opportunities, and um, job experiences should all fit in a one piece of paper. If it needs to be longer than that, uh, we can reassess as an individuals, but it should always be one piece of paper. Even as you get older, it should be consistently one piece of paper. Later on, you might want to switch to a curriculum vitae or CV. Um, those are really helpful to keep a, a running list of all of your ex, um, extracurriculars, job opportunities, anything like that. That's a great way to keep and store all of that information. And you should have that as an option too as you're writing the resume. That way you can keep all of those volunteer opportunities, um, jobs, anything along those lines in, um, in a document where you can always refer back to. 
All right, so now we're gonna talk about how to build your resume and we're gonna go by the parts that the resume has. So the first part is the header. The header has your name, your contact information. If you have a LinkedIn page, you can put that um, in there. Um, blog, websites, anything like that. If you have a portfolio, this is where it goes. It should have your full name and your contact information. This is what your employer will use to contact you in the future for an interview. So it has to be accurate. As you are all in ITA currently and are underage, I will ask every single one of you for your um, resume right now that you are distributing with ITA to please use the following address um, and phone number. If you're distributing it to an actual employer not part of ITA, you can put, put your um, information on there, which is fine. But for our purposes and for the internships that you will be doing in the future, you will have to put my um, contact information for you. This is just to ensure that um, we are all keeping you all safe. So your example will look something like this. Brenda Vasquez Carranza, your address will be 1210 West Dayton Street, Madison, Wisconsin, 53706. Your email address will be included, so make sure that you put your email address, and it should be your professional email address. And then my phone number, which is 608-265-3145. This is what, you should, what your um, resume uh, header should look like with your information on it. This is only for the internship uh, with ITA. Once you move out of ITA or pursue other opportunities that require you to submit a resume, please go ahead and change all of that information to be your correct information with your own phone number and your own email address and um, mailing address. But for now, for internships with ITA, it should be my information. Um, okay, so for objectives, we will be talking specifically about an objective and a summary statement. You can pick either one. It's completely up to you, but those are the ones that we're gonna focus on as you are in high school. Later on, you can find that there are other options or, such as a career profile, qualification summary, um, keyword summary, or list of other relevant skills. Um, but it, uh, it also depends on what kind of resume format you're using. For right now, we are gonna focus on summary statement and objectives. So a summary statement is a work-related um, statement that starting that is stating what you're offering for this employer and it should be not more than a couple um, per, uh, sentences it's a way to describe who you are to the employer by bringing in your job um, qualifications into the mix as well an objective is self-centered and is stating what you want in one or two phrases so here's an example of each one so a summary uh, statement is something along these lines. Skilled at learning new concepts quickly, working well under pressure and communicating ideas clearly and effectively. Extensive computer training, including knowledge of multiple networking environments and software titles. Enthusiastic and experienced working with digital systems. This summary statement really tells the employer that they're really good at computer, tr um, computer training um, that they're really enthusiastic as a human working in this company, um, and they know a lot about the work that they are gonna ask to be done. Um, an objective example is an internship in the information technology field where I can utilize graphic design. This is really simple. It states exactly what, who you are and, who you, and what you want to do with your resume and why you're applying to this job. Most students in ITA just go for the objective um, example, something short and sweet. All right, education. Uh, your resume will always have education even after you move on from high school um, and so on as you uh, progress in education. You should have the high school that you attended, including the location of the high school. This is important for people. Um, if you haven't graduated yet, you should have the anticipated graduation date. And once you graduate, make sure that you've changed the anticipated parts to graduated. Um, if you've taken any significant courses like AP courses or um, honors courses, you should include those in there. You don't have to include your grade, but you should include that you have taken those. Um, awards that you have received for anything academic related, attendance related, or leadership related, anything along those lines that are tied to your academics, it's important to put in there as well. 
And if you have a GPA of 3.0 and higher, it should be highlighted in your resume. That's for your high school experience. You are also part of ITA, so we would That's for your high school experience. And as part of ITA, we would also really like for you to put the Information Technology Academy on your resume. This will highlight the importance of what the commitment that you have made to ITA um, be shown in your resume. So you will put it, you will put your, um, you will put ITA along with the location of ITA um, and the particular te technical um, skills that you Oh my God, I can't say things. I'm gonna start that one over. All right, that's for your education in high school, but you are also in ITA, and we wanna highlight the importance of ITA and the commitment that you have made in ITA. So to showcase that in your resume, we want you to put it underneath education as a secondary educational um, endeavor. So the information technology should be included, the full out name, with the location, and you should also include any um, particular um, interest that you have that you learn from ITA and any awards that you receive through us if you have had receive any. At the end, because you are a high school student still, um, you might want to include a future educational goal in there. Like I want, I am uh, working towards my acceptance and attendance into UW Madison or Harvard or Stanford, whatever you want to do or anything along the lines educationally. Um, the, the, the future educational goal is a suggestion. A lot of students don't do that um, for, your, for their resume. All right, so here's an example of what your education could look like. So here's an example from a student, Memorial High School, Madison, Wisconsin, that's where the location. Um, it also says the years that they attended, so September 2013 to present because they're still in high school. Um, expected graduation date is June 18. Um, they have their honors courses and their GPA is listed, listed right there. Underneath high school um, is the Information Technology Academy with the same stuff from up there, from their education. So it has a location that they stay attended. Um, they could also include the uh, expected graduation date on this one too. Um, and they're interested in photography and graphic design and um, some other more other things that they are excited about in ITA. All right, now this is the really important part for employers. This is the part for experience and um, jobs, past jobs that you have had or current jobs that you have right now. So this is where you put your paid and unpaid experiences. It can be volunteer work, it can be work, it can be whatever it is, as long as it's an experience for your future job. So you should categorize these in reverse chronological order, which is the most current thing goes first, and then it goes to the um, to your first first job that you ever had, um, goes on the very bottom. So that's what um, reverse chronological order should look like. You should have the um, job title in there, the name, the location of the company, and the dates you were employed. You should also underneath those things describe the tasks that you did. Usually you wanna include about three tasks um, that are tied to that position. So if you are, if you were an educator, like a tech instructor, you would say um, creating lesson plans, uh, uh, delivering content to students, and managing equipment. Those are three things that you did as an IT a tech instructor. Um, you should always start your um, tasks with action verbs, so organized, led, communicated, something that makes the reader really. Um, really excited about the job that you did. You should be detailed in your description of the task. So if you managed um, content for 30 students, you should, you should be able to put 30 students in there to showcase that you were managing content for 30 students. Um, if you had to uh, take care of 30 cameras, you want to put that number in there so it showcases that you are responsible and the number of things that you had to take care of. Um, you should omit any personal pronouns, so I, we, in this section um, is just better for the employer to look at. And for volunteer services, you can also include those in here, so make sure that they are, um, that they are volunteer opportunities and they're categorized as so. Um, although they fall in the same experience 
portion of their resume, it should be divided into volunteer um, experiences and paid or unpaid um, internship kind of experiences. And they can follow the same guidelines as above, which I will explain with an example. So here's an example of experience. Um, this person um, worked at the senior center and at the Boston store. And you can clearly tell these two places that she worked in because they're bolded and they are, they're bigger than the other words. Um, so senior center, she worked there for, uh, from September, 2014 to the present, they have the date. Then they have the location of the senior center. And I only put one um, of the tasks that she did, but she did have three tasks in there. So she led social events at the school and volunteer in the community. That's a great um, task that she included in there. And then she had two other ones. In Boston store, we have the same thing. She has the location, the, location, the um, date that she um, worked there and the tasks that she did. You only have to pick three tasks, so make sure that you pick them um, to be a little bit different from the ones from other jobs, just to get a nice overview of all the things that you have done. Um, the one thing that this person is missing is they don't have their title for their job position. I would also include that either side, right next to the senior center, like volunteer assistant or the Boston store um, checkout person. I don't know what they're called. Um, but you can have that as a comma and then put the title of your position there too. There's also this section, which is called other special section. Um, this is where you include anything else that doesn't really fit on the rest of your resume. So languages, if you speak other languages fluently or semi-fluently, um, any computer skills, research techniques, uh, professional certifications, memberships, anything like that, you can put that in this section. And for you all, since you participate in high school activities, this is where you would put any extracurricular activities, such as sports, clubs, um, anything that is outside of your high school education. So this is where you can put your accomplishments too. For example, um, this person was the World Language Honor Society. This is where you can put it. As long as you have a header that says accomplishments, and then you put the accomplishments and the date that you received it, that's a way to do it. Um, then underneath, you can put another section, which is extracurricular activities, and you list all your extracurricular activities with the date that you attended those extracurricular activities. And if you have a position, um, like vice president, treasurer, or any of one of those, you can also include it there. And at the very end, um, this always goes at the end, you can put skills. Skills are anything that you can bring to the table for this job. So for example, this person is fluent in Spanish, so they would put that there. You can also put other um, skills such as being knowledgeable in Microsoft Suites or um, Adobe Suites or anything like that. It doesn't have to be tech related, um, but you can find other skills. Um, if you have trouble figuring out what skills you bring to the table, you can always look online and see what other examples are of skills that you possess. All right, so that's all for the resume. Um, again, this is a one piece of paper and now it's your turn to write your resume. Um, there is a worksheet that um, I hope you all had open while you walk through this video, but look at this um, worksheet and fill it out and see what you can already start putting into your resume. At the end of this video and at the end of this module, you'll have to submit your first draft of your resume. I will look at your resume, give you feedback, and then you'll have to do some updating based on my feedback and then submit it again to be ready for your mock interviews, which I will explain in another video.